Hello friends we have discussed the game of hawk and dove in the last lecture and then we said that we will extend this game into war of attrition so then what is the war of attrition again uh, this is uh, two animals or two parties fighting over some particular object and then we are introducing the element of time here also that uh, how much they are willing to wait for that so uh, it's like that when the both parties come to game they see the object and each other they in their head in their mind they commit some particular time that i am as going to wait this much for this object and then i am going to quit so uh, that will be one new addition here so let's assume that time is a continuous variable and this is spanning between 0 and positive infinity and then uh, each player values the object as uh, v uh, so for player i this will be vi and this is some positive value greater than 0 and if both concede at the same time uh, then the object is actually going to be uh given shared between these two so uh, it will be uh the value that they will get out of this will be v by 2 so uh, this is the situation and then uh the time they are waiting for the object then that is the cost that they have to incur so suppose that one the player one waited for 3 minutes then this will cost this player one 3 minutes out of his or her payoff so this will be the value that uh, they have to lose from their payoff so uh, the normal form of this uh, so simply players 1 and 2 action set up possible concession time ti which is a non negative number preferences will be given by the payoff function so you see that payoff of player i given the time of concession for player 1 and time of concession for player 2 so if a uh, player 1 is going to concede first then this is the payoff it will get is negative ti so suppose that uh, the player i conceded first then he did not get the object so vi becomes zero for him and then he waited for ti time so ti is the cost he has incurred so his payoff becomes negative ti that is what we have written here if both are waiting for the same time so uh, each are going to get half of the value of the object and now you write minus t1 or t2 doesn't matter because both are same uh, if the player two is going to concede first so player 1 will get the object so the value he gets is v1 minus the concession time of t2 the moment the player 2 conceded the player 1 received the object so this will be the payoff for that particular player so now we have uh, seen the preferences and payoff function now is the time to identify the best response function and before that we will actually try to see that what is best for player 1 given the time of player 2 because it can be anything so we have to fix these notations and we will use our payoff functions to uh, uh, understand this particular thing and then we will go to best response function so let's see how we actually plot these best uh, these uh, payoff functions so i will explain one and then it will be a uh, similar for others also so i need like this so see now here i am showing the time incurred by the player 1 concession time of player 1 and this is giving me payoff of the player 1 so positive payoffs along this axis negative ones along here now we have to fix our vi somewhere so let's say that the value of the object to player 1 v1 is here okay he values it this much now uh, this is the case when uh, my if t2 is less than v1 the player 1 values the object more 
so what should happen here so t2 is somewhere lesser than uh, the v1 so let's put t2 here so suppose t2 is here okay so now this becomes interesting so see if the player one uh, concedes anywhere before t2 then he is going to lose the object as well as incur negative uh, cost of uh, waiting uh, and leaving it without getting the object so we will plot a 45 degree line for this so let's take uh, this color so what happens if he concedes so, uh, so see if he concedes anywhere before t2 he is going to get a negative payoff this is a 45 degree line okay if he concedes here t1 is here then he will going to get this negative payoff if he concedes exactly at t2 then what will happen uh, he is going to get only half of the v1 right so somewhere he one here and then he is incurring this much more of the cost so he will get a negative payoff so this will be half of v1 minus t1 or t2 whatever you want to write okay uh, now this also tells us that we have to set some condition otherwise just think that let v1 be 10 and t2 is 8 then what happens if the uh, player 1 also waits for 8 minutes so then uh, u1 will be 10 by 2 minus 8 so this is going to be 5 minus 8 is equal to negative 3 but then can there be any situation where this is same so what if the t1 and t2 is also 5 so then what happens that i will get uh, 10 by 2 minus 5 and this becomes 0 so so uh, what we need to put we need to put another condition that uh, my v1 should be less than equal to 2 times of t2 so then the moment uh, it's equal to 2 times t2 i will be getting zero payoff so i will be here and the uh, moment it's more than that i will get a positive payoff so suppose i put t1 so that is greater than t2 so suppose i put t, uh, t1 somewhere along this line uh, this portion then what happens my t1 becomes now my payoff becomes a positive value and this will be a constant line like this okay and this point will again be not included so this is the payoff when uh, t1 is greater than t2 it means player 1 is outweighting the player 2 so uh, now we realize that if uh, t2 is less than v1 uh, and uh, this also holds that 2 of t2 is greater than equal to v1 okay so it means what should t1 player 1 do it should outweight t2 okay so this was one that we did uh, let's do the next one very quickly if uh, t2 is equal to v1 then what happens so we have to put first somewhere our vi 
and this time t2 is also equal to v1 so now see what will happen to uh, player 1's payoff if he keeps his t1 anywhere less than t2 he gets a negative payoff and this uh, this line will not be this particular point will not be included if he keeps t1 anywhere here his payoff will be negative in this side okay when he keeps it exactly equal to t2 or v1 he is going to uh, get a negative payoff because he will get half of the value of the object but he has to share uh, reduce the time and then uh, he is going to get a negative payoff the what he can do best even if he wins he gets a payoff of zero because uh, payoff will be u1 uh, u u1 will be v1 minus t2 and t2 is equal to t1 so it will be zero so the best he can get is actually zero in this situation so his payoff will remain like this itself okay and this point and this point is again not included because when t1 is equal to t2 he is getting this payoff and any t1 greater than t2 he gets a zero payoff so what is best for him if t2 is equal to v1 then he is going to get zero in all the possibilities uh, so what he can do he can quit immediately keep his t1 here zero immediately quit or he can keep his t1 more than t2 still he gets zero payoff so it doesn't matter so there are two possibilities for him either keep t1 is equal to 0 means immediately concede the object or keep t1 strictly greater than t2 if you keep your t1 less than or equal to t2 you are going to end up getting a payoff that is negative and you don't want to go up in negative payoff so uh, let's see the third case if uh, the player 2 player 2's concession time is more than the valuation of the object by the player 1. So I have to fix my v1. So suppose this is v1. And now the interesting point is this that t2 is greater than v1. It is to the right of uh, your own valuation. So now there is uh, what player one can do if he uh, concedes later than t2 if he keeps his t1 anywhere to this side he is going to end up with a negative payoff because he values the object 10 and the cost that he is incurring is let's say 12. So he is going to get a negative payoff. So again we will have our 45 degree line coming like this and this will be this point is not included and if uh, it's keeping t1 exactly equal to t2 then we will have like this v1 by 2 minus t2 and if he is keeping uh, t1 anywhere on this side of the t2 higher than the t2 he is going to enter a negative payoff so that will be given like this okay and uh, again this point will not be included because when the t1 is equal to t2 we are getting this and not this so we realize that uh, t1 best t1 can do is actually player one can do is get zero payoff so if t2 is greater than v1 t1 must concede immediately so this is what we realized after by analyzing the payoffs now convert these into uh, simply let's write our best response function so if uh, t2 is strictly less than v1 then player 1 should actually outweigh player 2 because he will get a positive payoff if t2 
t2 is equal to v1 then player 1 is going to end up with a zero payoff so either he can keep his concession time zero he immediately concedes or he concedes after player 2 keep his concession time strictly greater than player 2 because in both the cases he is going to get a zero payoff and third case was if uh, t2 is less than uh, t2 is greater than sorry is greater than valuation of the player 1 then player uh, 1 cannot get any positive value whatever he does he can if he doesn't concede immediately he will end up getting negative payoffs so he should concede immediately so this is the payoff for the player 1 similarly we can write the payoff for the player 2 Now let's plot these best response functions. Once we plot them, then we will see that what is the common area that we can find for the equilibrium. So for plotting, let's make a simplifying assumption that let player 1 values the object more than the player 2. This is a simplifying assumption and doesn't make a difference. It will only help us in easing our analysis. So suppose that this is T1, 0, T2. So we have to put let's say V1 here then V2 is somewhere here. Similarly, V2 is here and then we have V1 here. So we need a 45 degree line. So let's take this 45 degree line here. Okay. So now let's plot the uh, function. So first one is so our first one was that if uh, t2 is less than v1 t1 must be greater than t2 so how do we do that so uh, it's simple we take this so what does it mean uh, t2 is uh, less than v1 so it means t2 is actually somewhere in this region okay so how do we uh, show this now we will start from here it goes like this this point is not included so this is showing me the point where t1 is greater than t2 if t2 is less than v1 okay uh, and then second one was um, uh, if t2 is equal to v1 means t2 is exactly here then v1 can be either 0 here or it can be strictly greater than uh, t2 so it means i need to have um, this this is v1 okay so oops now this point is not included and you realize that actually this entire area from here to here is possible best response
So let's reiterate what we were saying. We are claiming that, uh, let's make it thicker. This is, um, I need from here. This is one of the boundary. This is another boundary. And then these are the points which are not included. So see, now uh, this 45 degree line is not included. That's why we have not said it this bit is tri uh, thick uh, orange line. So in this entire portion, T1 is strictly greater than T2 if uh, T2 is less than V1. See up to here T2 is less than V1 and then this entire portion actually comes into best response. This particular uh, line, the boundary, this is T1 is greater than T2 if T2 is exactly equal to V1. Okay. And T1 has to be, it can be 0 also. So where can T1 be 0? T1 will be 0 where we are, uh, it will be here somewhere 0. So we will take this particular axis where I am showing this, uh, this. So see, this point is now going to be included because uh, here T1 is equal to V1 and at that T2 is 0. So this point is included. So this is T1 is equal to 0 if uh, T2 is greater than equal to V1. Okay. Uh, now, so we have plotted for the player 1. Now let's plot for the player 2. So for player 2, V2 is actually lower than V1. So we will be uh, constrained here somewhere. So let's take a different color line for that. So, so the first best response condition says that if uh, T1 is less than V2, T2 should be greater than T1. So if T1 is anywhere in this region, my T2 should be strictly greater than that. So that is strictly greater than thing will actually something like this. It will start from here and then this region will be okay we will color it later first let's set the boundaries and then uh, second one is this if t1 is equal to if t2 uh, if v2 is equal to t1 then uh, it can be either 0 t2 can either be 0 where can be t2 0 t2 0 it can be here one point okay uh, like this or uh, it can be uh, strictly greater than T1. So strictly greater than T1 for strictly greater than T1 we will have a line from here like this. This is going like this but then this point this point will not be included because the moment you include a point on 45 degree line then it's greater than equal to not strictly greater than so this entire area can be shaded in green so this is the portion where t2 is strictly greater than t1 if uh, T1 is equal to V2 and this is the portion where T2 is equal to 0 if T1 is equal to V2. So now we have got these. Uh, what is remaining? Uh, last is if T1 is greater than T2 then uh, T1, T2 should be 0. So for any T1 greater than T2 greater than V2 it means if T1 is greater than uh, means it's on this portion then uh, it's 
better for the player uh, t1 is greater than so this will also be one of the boundaries this is where your t1 is less than uh, so let's write this boundary this is for green one uh, t2 is strictly greater than t1 if uh, t1 is strictly less than v2 so t1 anywhere in this region then i have to take this position and then now uh, everything is plotted so now let's see that what are the areas of intersection so you see these are actually there is no intersection in our 45 degree line so it means there are uh, no equilibrium where we will have common consistent time okay only area where we have intersections are actually this area and this area okay so let's name these areas and try to see what they are it's area a it's area b so what is a and b so let's say a what is happening in area a in the area a first thing to notice is that t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is greater than or equal to v1 so it means here the player 1 is going to concede immediately because the evaluation of the object by player 1 is either equal to or less than the consistent time of the player 2. So here P2 is going to win. What about the area 1? So see here, here T2 is equal to 0, player 2 is conceding immediately and player 1's waiting time or consistent time is more than or equal to valuation of the player 2. So here player 1 is going to outwit the player 2. So P1 wins. So see that the interesting thing about this Nash equilibrium that in neither of the Nash equilibriums A and B these are actually set of Nash equilibriums because these consistent times can be can take any value it's a continuous variable so these are sets of Nash equilibrium but in both the sets of Nash equilibrium there is no fight one player is conceding immediately and the other player is winning okay so uh, this is the interesting thing about this uh, particular war of attrition uh, the second thing is that uh, both player can concede first so it doesn't depend that oh, which player values the object more and it will concede or not so it is pretty much possible that uh, the player who values the object more actually end up conceding first and losing the object so winning the object doesn't mean that you were valuing it more and another important characteristic of this equilibria is that it is asymmetric in the sense that uh, the equilibrium action of the players are different one is conceding and another is waiting so uh, regarding the second thing that uh, the player who values it uh, the object more may actually end up conceding first so i have an interesting story to share that uh, what could be the reason behind this uh, this is just one story to uh, relate with war of attrition so you must have heard story of king solomon's justice he was the counterpart of our vikramaditya so one day uh, in his court a very strange uh, litigation came two women were quarreling over they were claiming that a, a newborn infant is theirs the infant was so young that it could not even uh, point towards the mother or anything and there was no uh, witness so there is no way you can differentiate who is the actual mother and who is not so king solomon was very perplexed both were fighting that this is uh, her child so finally uh, he said that okay i am going to cut the child into two equal pieces and give half of to both of you uh, now guess what would happen 
the one of the lady immediately cried out no no please let the child live i concede my right uh the king immediately realized who is the actual mother can you guess who was the actual mother yeah you guess it rightly the lady who actually conceded first because she was more interested in the well being of the child rather than getting the child so she thought okay at least my child will live so fine if it is not if he is not with me so uh, that was the one example where the player who was valuing the object more actually did not get the object so this was war of attrition let me know but uh, if you like it and thank you for watching bye take care